Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, we're gonna play with some more watercolor experiments. Um, my channel is all about playing and experimenting with things, with products, with um, mediums, and I've really been enjoying watercolor. Uh, so this is the last watercolor video I probably uploaded um, since filming this video that we're gonna do today. And uh, this was really fun to experiment with watercolors, paint, paper, the whole spiel. So today we're going to do something a little bit more deliberate, like this one, for example, where I'm going to apply the watercolor in a way that mimics flower shapes and then we'll play with design on top. So, so a different approach, but it's all about having fun. It's all about trying something new. Um, trying to be creative and experimental is really what it's all about at least for me and that's what i like to show on this channel so what i've done is i have taken paper uh, copy paper uh, with a design on it that i find intriguing or interesting or fun to play with uh, so i look at the graphics on the paper the shapes the lines um, you can use anything you have you do want the paper to be relatively absorbent but not over absorbent so like a really old book page might not work so well with this um, and a magazine kind of paper won't work well as well because it's thin and it has a coating on it that makes it shiny so uh, just standard book pages would work best because you are going to be applying water to this paper and it will only let you absorb so it will only absorb so much before it starts the fibers in the paper start to break down because it is not a watercolor paper now that being said i did glue it to a watercolor paper but the water is penetrating this page and not the watercolor paper is that complicated <laughs> did i make that complicated so <coughs> excuse me anyways let's have some fun so i am going to basically paint the pages so there will be some dry time in between here i'm not sure how i'm going to fill that dry time because we do need it dry in order to <clears throat> paint so let's get uh let's get going on the paint and then we'll see what we we can fill it with after so i've got my um my melly me like liang paints here and i did a review on these paints and i really like them so i keep using them <clears throat> excuse me gotta tickle in my throat um i'm gonna go into what i believe to be ruby red here i'm using a number 10 round uh watercolor brush and my water and i have some paper towel on hand and what i want to do is just kind of imply the shape of some poppies or roses nothing too specific but i want to kind of build up these little forms here and I'm thinking in terms of petals. So I'm not going to be, it's not going to be perfect. It's just going to be implied. So maybe a bud here that hasn't fully opened. And then uh, another one down here where the flower is maybe completely open. So I'm gonna do just these, really manipulate the paintbrush here push the paint into some shapes that I can play with later. And I'm going to add in maybe some orange. So this one I believe is cadmium red. Is it cadmium red? Hang on a sec. Cadmium, cadmium orange by the looks of it. I'm going to drop some of that in there just for fun. See what it does. Maybe add some down here. So just really kind of play with the paint and I want to introduce that color in other places as well so I will kind of bleed out the edges of the flowers maybe put in some kind of royal blue here what's this one cobalt blue I'll do some green just play with whatever colors that appeals to you and I just Fill in and play. I'm not worried about the details so much. I really just want to have fun with the watercolor. And then I'm going to pull the details out later with some with some pen. Kind of mimic the flower and 
put some details of the flower itself in a little bit more. And I'm just going to maybe lift some of this paint off in a few spots. So lifting is where you dry your brush out and just kind of remove some of the paint. And this works really well uh, with a watercolor brush. It's a little bit more difficult with a regular brush because there's these are absorbent fiber hairs here. All right, and go back to this. Let's try this red. <clears throat> it's a bit more pink. I like that. I'll try a couple of different reds. What's this one? Rose red. So this will be very pink. I'm just going to play with the brush. Just going to put things in. <clears throat> kind of visualize the flower in my head. But not overthink anything. Go back to maybe this. This must be crimson red here. Put a little bit more red in. And I'm just going to play with it. Okay, and then I'll move to this one. So maybe we'll do more of like, let's say a tulip shape. I'm still going to play with the reds. So more of a tulip shape here. Just kind of visualizing the flower in my head what tulips what I think a tulip might look like I'm just brushing it in I might lift some off in some spots and remember this is paper this is not watercolor paper so it will dry and absorb much faster than your regular watercolor paper which is also kind of fun it, it can give you some really fun technique some fun results. Go into some more of this orange. I'm gonna throw that in. Just play. You can have a um, a vision, a, like a reference in front of you of these flowers, so that could help you kind of visualize what it is you want to paint. nothing's nothing's for sure in these kind of paintings it's a very loose relaxing approach to watercolor you could put some leaves in here if you wanted if you wanted to kind of imply that shape let's throw some green I'm gonna leave some white space A little bit more intense color here and remember this will dry a lot lighter I'm gonna start removing some of it just so that it will dry in time for us to draw normally I would let this dry just so I'd have a little bit more intense color but I do want to make sure we have time to draw today so it does have to be dry I really like that intense green in this one So we added a little bit of blue and a little bit more blue just in a couple of spots here just so it hasn't been left out maybe a little bit of bluey green in here what else have we got for colors this kind of aqua color which would be fresh blue it's called it's kind of bright maybe saturate it with some of that olive green so it's not quite so bright but it is a pretty color all right so the point behind these and i'm going to put the watercolors away now because i think that's good the point behind these is really just experimental so my channel is about playing with different mediums, different colors, different approaches, and just really having a, a fun time. So while this is drying a little bit, I'll show you this little watercolor book that I made. And I did do a video on how to build these books. Um, I did a video on a much smaller one, a, more of a landscape style, but you can apply it to any, any size you want. 
And this is really where I kind of just play with my watercolor. Um, I, obviously, I like botanicals. I'm not too big into landscapes, but I have done them before. Um, and I just play. I have showed this book before. Uh, you know, some, some I end up liking, some I don't like, but it's a learning process, so I keep them because I look back at it and it either gives me an idea of what I, what I want to do or what I don't want to do. It kind of gives me um, visual learning aids and remembering how to actually apply colors and different techniques. So I have sections I've taped off and haven't painted yet. So this one, I really love the color, but I ended up not liking these patches that I did. So it's not a technique I would use again, but I do like the, the flow of the dots. So constantly playing. This, I think I, I did a video on how to paint these, which is also really fun. Very, very loose. Uh, this is what we're working on today. Very graphic, but quite pretty. Uh, we did a video on how to do these, which is what I showed you at the beginning. Here's another version of that um, using watercolor, um, using um, music note paper, and I kept it very subtle. So I didn't do a lot of graphic work there. It's very soft. Um, if I were to play with it, I would probably intensify some of these spots and maybe whiten up some of these leaves with a Posca pen just to pull them forward a bit. So even though I painted this probably a month ago, I can come back to it several months later and play with it some more and that's what I really like about these little journals that you make um, because they get to use up all your scraps this is a fun technique too and I'd like to do a video on this and I, we all did it when we were kids but you you put the watercolor paint down and you blow a straw through it and then you create these flows and then you put your own little graphic designs in so I sketched out this kind of movement here and I really like to play with movement in there and then I wanted something a little bit more significant, so I, I started putting words in and numbers just for fun. And it creates a really fun paper. And the, the possibilities of these really are endless. So this is a blank one I haven't sketched on yet. This is another experiment. I did a face here and I didn't like it, so I whited it out. And I'll probably put some papers and layers down. Uh, so you, again, you're coming back and forth. This is something I was playing with I haven't finished. Just kind of making interesting textures with um, with paper and watercolor background. And here's another one of those uh, blowed, blown paints, but this time I put some metallic oxide on it and it turns this kind of really cool matted silvery color, which I thought was kind of fun. Again, I haven't sketched on that yet. So that's as far as I've gotten in that book. But um, I would highly recommend you, if you're into journal making, make yourself a watercolor sketchbook like that, whatever size, and really have fun with it. So these are some of the scraps that didn't get in the book. I didn't sew them in. I went to sew them in and then decided that was enough paper in there. So now I have some loose scraps. So I think this is, it's still pretty damp, but I think we can go ahead and draw. I'm going to open up that one I had showed you just so I stay within that kind of parameter. So now I'm going to sketch. I can see visually where my flowers are. And uh, now I want to pull the details out a little bit. So I am going to give myself some detail here on where I want the flower to sit. So here's my center. I'm just going to put some scribbly lines in there for now. So I'll figure out what I want to do. And here's a petal coming at me here. Maybe curves in a little bit. Another one here. And I'm not staying on the perfect line of the watercolor either. Kind of breaking it up. Because I like it to be a little unpredictable. And we can even use pencil crayon in here. I think we're going to give it a try. So a little mixed medium. So now I'm going to just darken up this area. I'm just going to scribble it in. And I know the center of my flower here. Uh, I am using a Uniball uh, Vision, it's called. Uh, I just got them, excuse me, off Amazon. They are a archival and waterproof ink. So I could add more watercolor to this if I wanted to after. I'm just going to sketch a few here. 
keep it nice and loose, bring out some details, kind of a, I don't want to do too much until I've decided what I'm going to do with this. So now I'm going to define this flower shape. So this one I think I'll put on an angle. So the center is here and there's a petal in front of that. And there's going to be one over here, one way back here, one on the side, and another one back here. There's the center of the flower. So there's that one. Again, we'll darken up a few spots. And then maybe this one that's just starting to open. Again, just a little center right here. Just a quick sketch. Nothing too serious, very loose. All right, and we can put some stems in there if we want. I'm just gonna add a little scribble here, but not too much. Now I wanna play with the background. I wanna really play with um, the watercolor stains and the graphic lines of this paper. So I have some really fun green here that I might turn into an indication of a leaf. Kind of pull that in just for fun kind of visualize some things here and maybe another leaf right here and another one over here Scopey a leaf, this little patch. So that's kind of fun. And now I'm going to play with more graphic um, background pieces. So maybe pulling some of these graphic lines down. And this, this one here. And then these go this way. So let's do that. That's kind of fun. So this is old survey paper from a book. I should have really scanned and photocopied the full sheets when I when I got the book because it's such cool paper. It's got this really beautiful borders and some really beautiful etches in it. I really enjoyed it. I wish I had more of it. So I'm gonna start bulking up some of these lines. So to do that, so we're not here all day, I'm going to use, I was going to use my, I keep misplacing it, it's driving me bonkers, I was going to use my Sharpie because it has a finer point to it, there it is, aha, oh no, that's red, oh man, there it is, so it's got a bit of a finer point, it is not waterproof, um, it's a permanent marker, but it's not waterproof, so if you are going to plan to put more paint down you don't want to use these yet unless you want that bleeding effect which can be cool so i think i'm gonna pull some of these lines in a little darker a little bit bolder and just have fun with some patterns i've done these videos before where I really play with patterns and uh i get a lot of positive feedback on them so i thought i'd do another one but this time with the flowers, kind of more structured watercolor in the sense that we are painting flowers, but on a loose approach. And I'm just gonna have fun filling in some really graphic type lines here, like really bold designs to really play against the softness of these flowers. So there's a lot of contrast going on which I really like the look of. 
and my lines aren't straight as you can see they're very sloppy I really like um, the contrast of black and white playing against these these flowers so I'm sure after I do this I will be adding in some white somewhere with my Posca pen and I look at these designs like these uh, lines and circles and things as not only design elements but texture so you can achieve balance through texture color composition all kinds of things and I really love playing with these contrasts very relaxing very therapeutic let me know if you guys really do enjoy these videos if you want to see more now that I've done a few of them maybe you're getting tired of them and just have fun and tag me on Instagram if you can if you're doing them because I would love to see them So I've got this big leaf here. I'm not too keen on the sketch that I did here, so I think I'm going to eliminate it by adding the texture. Okay, that's kind of fun. Maybe um, something horizontal down here. And maybe something a little up here. Follow this line here. All right. Okay, so there's that. And then maybe we'll use our Posca pen here. So this is a Posca pen, and I believe it's acrylic paint marker. But what's nice is it sits right on top of things. Most things. I think the only thing it really doesn't sit on top of is ink. So this marker that I just used, you kind of have to let it evaporate a little bit. I'm just going to bring some weight into these lines. All right, I'm gonna use this uh, Sharpie and I think I'm gonna color the flower in a little bit darker in the center here. Really pop that center. And then maybe add in one more texture, which is the polka dots that I like. So there's a square here on this paper I'm going to use that. I'm going to color it in with this bigger permanent marker, though. It's just a dollar store marker, just so you're not here all day watching me color in. This also needs to evaporate before you can put the Posca pen on it. So you have these soft organic shapes of flowers and leaves, and then you have these very graphic lines here which are really fun. I'm gonna do one here, so there's a line here. And I think I'll do a line here. I'm gonna go cut that leaf off. Try and do it straight. <laughs> Color that in. Your, paint, your paper does need to be dry. Mine's a bit damp here. So it might not absorb the ink evenly. Kind of define the shape of the flower here. Fill that in. And I'm just going to redraw this leaf to cut a little shorter. Yeah, like that. I think I will also put one right here. I'm going to get rid of that horizontal, those horizontal lines and block it in. And 
love the contrast of the black, white, and color here. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more while we work on this other side, and then we'll come back to this. Okay, make sure I'm in frame. I'll roll over a little bit. So these are more of a tulip shape. So I'm gonna, again, just to find my shape of tulip. And then this one could be a little bit more open. So I've got some tulip here. Again, not a perfect rendition of a tulip, that's for sure. But a flower. And then what's this one? Let's do one in front. A tulip opened and then another tulip behind it let's do one here that's opened and get some just inside a little bit it's kind of cute got some leaves and very loose. They're either going to play a part of the design or not. All right, so let's do some drawing in this one. I think I want to mimic this idea. So I have some very graphic straight up and down lines here. I'm going to use my Sharpie for this. And I'm going to pull out some of those lines. I really like the numbers in between these lines, so I'm going to keep those. I think they're really nice texture. So I drew a leaf here. Um, so I'm going to go and break where the leaf is drawn. It's like another flower here. I think I'm going to draw in. Okay, I'm going to do one here. I'm just going to kind of follow the texture of the paper and see where it takes me. here and book pages could be fun too you could black out and uh, certain words and leave like positive words in there that could be fun to play with and uh, all kinds of all kinds of fun ideas okay so that's it for the lines so let's play with those lines. Let's make, let's make more lines. <laughs> Never have enough lines. Okay, so this goes up here. Let me just find this. And then this can go straight down to this one. I went right through it oh well okay so we'll just keep this we'll keep this one this um leaf this one here I might not be able to see it on camera I wanted to keep this one too but I colored over it by accident Okay, let's maybe color this right in. Total experiment. It's a place to be bold and and have fun because it is just, it's again, it's something you're either gonna love that you've created or hate or learn something from. And trust me, a lot of my stuff ends up in the recycle bin or in my scrap pile.
um, but I've learned something from it and I've enjoyed the process. So that's mostly what it's all about. And if you don't like to sketch, if, you, if it's a little intimidating, you can always use a stamp to stamp your image out. And maybe just use part of the stamp. Don't stamp the full flower, just part of it. And that way you can loosen up on, the, on how to paint it in. Does that make sense to you? So you don't do a full, perfect stamp of the image. You just get part of it and then fill the rest in with your imagination kind of thing. See, I think I got glue there. So the, the marker is repelling a little differently. It's not absorbing the same. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for a minute and then we're gonna place with this Posca pen here. And I am just gonna put some dots in. Now I think I have another size Posca pen somewhere. I ordered three sizes. So I can get three different looks. Center. Flowers. Let's see if I can find it. So I got this one. Oh, where's my lid? Too expensive to uh, read to dry out. I hope that wasn't off for very long. And now this one's going to make bigger dots. I'm sorry my hand's in the way, but I want them round so I have to go straight down. If I go on an angle, they're not perfectly round. And I'm just going to add some dots in. And it's the contrast that really pops. Contrast between the, the boldness of the colors and the contrast between the softness of the flowers and the straight lines. And you can really play with this. I really hope you try it and I really hope you share it for us all to see. Should maybe do a hashtag if I knew what I was doing. So we could all upload our work there and we could all share our ideas. I'll try and figure out how to do that in the future. I'm just gonna do down here now. You taking a nice loose simple watercolor painting and added it added some really fun textures and patterns to create an interesting work of art hey you really like your work you can throw it in a frame hang it on the wall it also makes really beautiful paper to play with in your journaling or scrapbooking and of course you would use the colors that appeal to you so I'm not a big pink lover, but I do like the softness of this pink, pinky red against this black and white. All right, we're gonna leave that for a minute. I wanna probably clean up these lines, but the paper's a bit wet. It's starting to tear a little. We could put some solid white in here. eliminate the background texture see not perfect lines but that's imperfect and I kind of like it so I'm just cleaning up the background color a little bit so it pops a little bit more forward This one's a bit wet, so I'm gonna leave it. Maybe brighten this up a bit. Okay, so we did some square here, and here I feel I'm going really square as well. I think I wanna go a little bit more organic on this. I just feel like it's too, this is square, this is square, so I'm gonna soften these lines a little. Just gonna give them a little bit less square. I 
And that's the beauty of these. So you can just keep changing them. Put a patch here. Oh, my marker's starting to die. I'm creating my own lines here. I'm not following the lines of the paper. I'm drawing in my own shape. So maybe I'll make this curve right over. Just connect it. here. I'm going to introduce this pattern somewhere else. So I think we'll do it maybe over here. But do I want to do it horizontal or vertical? I think I'm going to go horizontal. a little bit in here. All right. Play with my Posca. Maybe put some little detail of white in the flower here. Let's see if we can wipe some of this writing out. Paper's still a little bit wet, too. Mm, let's do our dots. I love the dots. We're going to have so much fun with these dots. I'm going to do them pretty quick. They're not going to be perfect little dots. Just so the video isn't hours long. You can have fun with the dots too. They don't have to stay, you know, just in this space. So you can expand them outside the space that you've, in the space I mean the black lines that we've established here. Or you can do a cluster, a really tight cluster, and then kind of thin them out towards the edges. I'll show you that in a second. So doing a cluster here, as I move up, they get a little bit more spaced out. Also a fun way to play with these dots. A really intense through the middle here. And as we move away, they're a little bit thinned out to the point where there's just a few. I try not to do a perfect pattern with these dots. I mean, you can if that's what you're into. I prefer the more random look. Dot this up a little bit more in here. magical, isn't it? They look like little fairy lights or something. <laughs> it's got a real whimsical, sophisticated look to it. Was it Seurat that did the pointillism? 
painting and everything was a dot. Imagine the patience he had to do those dot paintings. Wow. And he did those with a brush. <laughs> it puts it in perspective how time consuming that pointillism paint those pointillism paintings would be. They are beautiful though, I've seen a few. And they're fascinating up close. The layers of paints and the color mixtures and the way he played with colors was pretty amazing. There's a kind of science behind it. That and when you see one close up you can truly appreciate. All right, I'll keep playing here because this is really fun. I hope you're sketching along with me. I hope you're enjoying this little watercolor experimental series here. I'm going to be trying other mediums other ways to be creative, not necessarily just watercolor, but drawing and painting and gluing paper, ripping paper. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to put next on my channel. <laughs> but I like to expose you to all kinds of different mediums and see what it is that's out there and how to mix some of them together your own style, your own brand, your unique creative self. I really like this area here. really like how they soften and kind of float. So I'm going to play a little more here. Of course you can always fast forward the boring dotting. probably in the way so you really can't see much anyways. But it is really fun. <laughs> Does that sound irritating at all? <laughs> I don't really want some intense ones down here. Let me bring some of that white into the stripes. We'll do some intense here and then light at the top. You could do different dots, different colored dots if you have Posca pens. Different colors. I only have white investment one day and buy some other colors like metallics. It could be fun because you can use those on painted furniture and everything. Okay. I'm gonna make this part intense here with dots. Okay, that's kind of pretty. I like it. And you can up it by taking some pencil crayons if you wanted. So here's some, this is an orange and a raspberry. So if I wanted, I could really pop some more color inside this paper. More texture if I wanted. So again, using another medium that you might have kicking around. Kind of play with the... Whenever you're coloring though, you wanna make sure that you're moving in the same direction that the petal would grow. So you don't wanna color this one this way. You wanna go this way, kind of curve where it would, where the petal itself would curve. And that helps create form as well. So around here, you'd curve it. These are Prismacolor pencils. They are more expensive pencil crayons, but they are really beautiful pencil crayons. So here's the orange going in, which I quite like. And in this case, I'm swirling it because I just want to soften that raspberry color I just put in. It's kind of fun. Intensifies the color a little more. 
And then if you have a green kicking around, here's a grass green. You can even intensify that a little bit. Going over top of your watercolor. I don't want to put too much green in because I don't want I don't want it to fight against this this color here, but just a pop. Just a little something. Same over here, give her a little in here. Try not to overthink it too much. Some orange here. Just in a few spots. I don't want to take away all that pretty watercolor work just intensify a few a few areas with more color the, the watercolor is just so beautiful you can bring some blue in you had some blue I don't think I have any blue handy what have I got here I've got this kind of what is it called True green, true green. We'll get a bit of a cooler green, so why not? All right, and just keep playing with what you like. I'll put a little bit more orange and red in these, especially in the center here, where it really can create a little bit more depth to our flower. And then smooth it out with this orange. Again, I don't want to fill in all the flower because I want that watercolor to stand out. So I'm in intensifying the color a little bit using another medium. Get a little green on this one. smaller dots on, on this. So I got big dots and I'm going to put some small dots on there. Oh, you can just keep going and keep going. But this will be the last thing I do and I'll show you a close up of what we accomplished. Makes it a little busier kind of like and just over here just a couple so I'm not in love with this piece I'm looking at it thinking it's kind of distracting me I'm gonna do now I didn't put any pencil crayon on here because pencil crayon has wax in it so your marker wouldn't sit over top I'm wondering if my marker will go over the Posca pen I think what I'm gonna do is make this smaller and I'm gonna turn this whole section my pen's high this whole section into that dotted area. I wasn't loving that leaf. It was just a little, a little overpowering for me. So I'm going to turn this all black. And this is where you really get to experiment and change things. See if you like them. You can photocopy these final results and put them, you know, use the paper over and over again. So I'm just going to uh, let that dry a little. What I'm not liking on this one is this white space here. So maybe for fun, we could put black dots in there. 
problem is my Sharpie does not make nice, just to tone down that white spot. There, makes me feel a little better. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for this to evaporate a bit. So then I can put my Posca on it. And I'm gonna pull that pattern down now and it shrunk the leaf up. Which I like better. Just do this a little faster. Sorry for the sound, but I'm trying to do it quick so the video's not too long. So I'm going to do little ones too. All right. <laughs> Bear with me. Hope you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you do. And leave a comment share anything you like just so I know if you're watching and if you enjoy these types of videos okay there no more banging there we go so there's our two little creative loose approach to watercolor so I'll bring it a little closer so you can see some more detail so in this one there's only little bits of pattern of the paper showing through and the rest was more of a playing with the the graphic style contrast here so here's this one. Again, the paper showing through a little bit, but really through the flowers is what uh, is what creates texture on the flowers, which is really nice. So I hope you like that. Uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Okay, that's it. Take care. Bye.